This episode of the Informed Pregnancy Podcast contains important but mature content that may not be suitable for young children. Listener discretion is advised. Yo, I don't think we should talk about this. Come on, why not? Jeez, by night I can barely stand. I don't look that great, you know. Yo, that's a part of our life. Come on. Let's talk about sex and babies. Let's talk about you and me. Let's talk about all the good things and the bad things that may be. Let's talk about sex. Let's not forget sex. Let's talk about sex. Let's talk about sex. Welcome to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting Podcast. I'm your host, Dr. Elliot Berlin, and I'm joined by our co-hosts of the day, Kira Soltanovich. Kira is a hilariously entertaining comedian, writer, actor, and producer, and a two-time reproducer. Isn't that true? I can't let that one just slide. <laughs> you got to run these by me first. Sorry. Um, <laughs> edit. Kira has a, a one-hour stand-up comedy special on Amazon called You Did This to Me, which was shot during her third trimester. She did season one of Win Sanity, and she has a popular parenting podcast of her own called The Kira Soltanovich Show. Welcome back to the podcast. You've thank been with you, us Dr. Berlin, and thank you for letting me interrupt your intro several times. No, of course. You know I can't. That's why be I brought quiet. you back. Yeah. Nicole Sessions, you've been on our podcast before as well. Your wife, mother, birth worker, and artist, in addition to being a writer and actress. By the way, I notice you, you're an actress and not an actor. Yeah. Is that a conscious choice? Absolutely. You're an actress. Yes. Uh, but you also are certified as a birth doula, Reiki practitioner, yoga instructor, and hypnobirthing childbirth educator. You're currently finishing your first year as an herbalism apprentice. And you and your husband have an online business selling vaginal steam stools and herbal steaming blends. That's correct. Welcome back to the podcast. Thank you. Nice this to be chemistry here. is all going to work great because <laughs> today we are talking about sex. And our guest is Bianca White, a certified sex coach specializing in love, intimacy, and relationships. Welcome to the podcast. Hello. I have a question for you. What is a sex coach? A sex coach. Well, that's a pretty loaded question. What do people think a sex coach is? Well, most, yeah, that's probably a better (laughs) Are you there during sex? (laughs) I do not watch people have sex. Oh, But I do recommend instructional videos sometimes about with people having sex. Because it'd be great if she like a like like a third base coach, you know, where they're giving like signals. Yeah, right there. Third (laughs) base coach. (laughs) Did you choose third base? She's touching her shoulders and the brim of her hat and doing like this to the left. Yeah, it's it's similar. It's similar. Mm -hmm. I mean, I I, I like it. It's funny that Kira says because immediately when I heard the term sex coach, I was thinking about all my coaches in my life, like my wrestling coach and my basketball coach, and they just, you know, they drive skills over and over and over again, and and then they're you know they're standing on the sidelines being like. Inside role, half Nelson. No, for sure. I mean, that's what people call, and they say, you know, what is coaching? How is it different than therapy? Um, Most of whatever I tell them, it has to do with the fact that, like, I have to dispel the myth of, like, you know, you're calling a sex coach. You're not calling a sex therapist. A sex therapist basically deals with, like, your issues with regards to the past, like, why you are the way you are today versus a sex coach, which will say, well, what's your goal? Where do you want to get to? So, like, traditionally, like, a regular sports coach would be like, well, this is what you want to do. We want to win the game. So these are the things that we're going to do to win the game. These are the plays. And then I'm here to kind of coach you on. So that's kind of basically my role. I mean, I just kind of go okay, if you want to have better intimacy, these are the things that we're going to do to try to achieve that. And then we just check in, you know, weekly, bi-monthly, just uh, figure With out. an individual? Or Say with that a, again? Are you working with an individual? Are you working with a couple? Typically, I work individually, but I also do work with couples as well. With either individual? With either. Mm-hmm. Okay. I'm either. saying you can work with, it's not just working with the woman or working with the man in a heterosexual relationship? It's, um, I, I work with whoever calls, really. <laughs> whoever rings the phone. <laughs> okay. So anybody. Yeah. But more often one person in a relationship and sometimes the couple. Yeah. Mm-hmm. I can totally relate to this because I remember I had a... Um, cross-country coach in high school who wanted to have sex with me. Oh. So, <laughs> this is, 
it Very makes similar. sense. That's a different type it's of different? sex coach. Oh, okay. I'm yeah. so sorry. I'm going to need more coach, information. Coach with the sex. That's yeah. more yeah. like coach <laughs> sex. Coach, coach. coach sex. Okay. Which is totally different. So sorry. English is sex my second language. Coach. Cross country, huh? Yeah, I did cross country. That's endurance. <laughs> it is. <laughs> so I have a question about a sex coach. Yes. Um, you know, so let's say a couple is having trouble, right? Mm-hmm. Like because they've lost the intimacy uh, after you know, the kids and even vaginal steaming is not helping, which I don't even know what that is yet, but I just feel like maybe, you know, they got the stool and um, they, it's not. So what if they have two different ideas of what they want their sex life to be? That's more often what I get. Is okay. most, uh, most people I think that I see are usually one person desires sex more than the other person. And so it's usually about bridging that gap, kind of coming to the middle ground of like, you know, listen, my husband wants sex all the time and I don't really want to have sex all the time. And that's generally more often than not, you know, like the general consensus of people in general is that men require Mm -hmm. sex more and that women don't really want sex as much, especially if you bring in like pregnancy and and children. Right. Taking care of the children kind of causes a little bit of like a deficit in terms of like time and energy and the tension and stuff. So usually after pregnancy, if we're dealing with children, then um, a lot of times, you know, we have to suggest kind of, you know, amping up the intimacy. You know, right. I think also like it, it's your your time is limited. Yeah. But also just the time to like get to the waxing lady. That, that <laughs> That's too. a huge one for me. Sure. But like time, okay, the kids and the dinner and the if bath and all could that. Multitask. You're still waxing? <laughs> no, I mean I have two kids and I'm married. That's what I'm saying. I, that's like, right. That went at the door once I got married. It almost seems Sorry. like if you could multitask or and even just have sex with the waxing lady, why? <laughs> <Wow. laughs> right. Together. Have sex with the waxing lady. You're and already just there. Kill two birds with one right. one strip. See, that's Easier. why you're a doctor. Yeah. Um. Yeah. That's why they pay me the big bucks. Um. How How do you become a sex coach? Um. What is the training like? That's been a journey. Um. So. Sex coaching is a certification, so it's technically not like years and years and years and years of studying at a traditional college. Most people don't offer sex coaching degrees, but there are programs that do. So you can become like a life coach, a nutritional coach, or a sex coach from a specific, you know, specified uh, special school. (laughs) A school of sex coachery? Yes. Okay. It's not technically called sex coachery, but I assumed I might have made that up. Yeah. It's just sex coaching. Okay. But it's, what's the, I'm technically what's the getting, program like? Um, so there's a two-year kind of self-paced program that I took um, by this woman here in Los Angeles by the name of Dr. Patty Britton, who is basically like the foremost expert on sex coaching. Mm. Um, and she has a program called the Sex Coach University. Mm. Which kind Great of name. yeah? It's it, to me, it sounded honestly a little bit hokey when I checked it out. But um, the company is itself like a really highly reputable company. Um, they're like the foremost sex coaching business um, in probably the entire world. Um, and that's only because I did re- do a fair amount of research. Um, and in my experience, just having been in the sex coaching industry now for the past few years, that like everybody knows Patty and they know that her coaching program is probably like the best. How do you, I mean, at what point did you decide? I think, I, want, I mean, when people ask you as a kid, what do you want to do when you grow up? No, this isn't my <laughs> my career of, of origin. <laughs> right. Oh, you did something else first. <laughs> yeah, I was a costume designer and stylist for like 20 years. Oh. But in that whole process, I kept saying, you know, like, this is not brain surgery. I'm not curing, you know, childhood cancer. This is just not like, hurry up and go get those shoes. Like, you're going to make me feel good at night. Oh, it wasn't fulfilling. No, it just felt like, you know, I'm not helping people. And, you know, make it gave it made me feel like, you know, when people come in and you see their vulnerabilities, you know, of them taking off their clothes and putting on other clothes. Cause Which I is see, almost the same as your it, new career. Exactly. Right. I mean, I'm, I'm still telling people to take off their clothes. Right. And put on other clothes. <laughs> right. <laughs> Um, but yeah, you, I mean, you get used to seeing people's insecurities and it was kind of sad. I think every day, day in and day out. And I try to help people, you know, be like, well, maybe if you just like, you know, work it a little bit or like, you know, stand like this and just like, you got to really feel it, you know, and try to coerce Mm. people into feeling better about what clothes they were putting on to kind of, you know, put a good foot out into the world. So you were like a wardrobe therapist. Yes, I was. I started as a wardrobe therapist. Thank you. And now you're a sex coach. Mm -hmm. Yeah. When did you, I mean, I, that wasn't fulfilling. When did you stumble across? I started actually fostering children. Mm. And my 
work schedule was like 20 hour days and it just wasn't conducive to like starting a family. I knew I wanted to do this. Um, it kind of happened sort of just by chance, but I got this opportunity to foster these kids and I was like, all right, maybe I should just collect unemployment and figure out plan B. And I did. And I, st- I checked out this program. I just kind of just right out the gate, just ran with it. And then over the course of probably four years um, in my studies, which should have taken me two years, right? But I was studying lots of different things in that whole um, realm. And then um, I came across another program that they offer through a institute in San Francisco called the Institute of the Advanced Study of Human Sexuality, which um, they offer a doctorate program. Oh, wow. And um, you can become along the way. Doctor of Human Sexuality? Yeah. Um, And then it's also called Clinical Sexology. So, yeah. Sounds like something Prince would be part of. Sexology. (laughs) That's right. Clinical Um, Sexology. And then also Sex Counselor. So that's like the the different designations along the way. Is that sort of like Old Name B, Gap Banana Republic? You say that again? Nothing. (laughs) I have a question. I have a question for you. So when people meet you, do they just assume you're like really kinky and multi-orgasmic and like you you have the best sex? (laughs) Yeah, I'll get back to you. I'll get back to you, Bianca. That yamaka. It's a dead giveaway. It gets ladies hot. (laughs) We got you covered. Sometimes you wear a little angle. It's like, hey. Sorry, go ahead. It's a multifaceted tool. <laughs> well, I just, I'm trying to think of like assumptions people make when you, you know, if you tell people you're a doula, they assume you're just like walking around wearing these like flowy skirts and right. like a flower crown. Well, yeah, you did so. have a little placenta on your arm. Right. I didn't want to say anything. I thought I got a little yeah, bit you had a little bit of placenta. I was like, uh oh. You ate it. Yeah, I did. <laughs> yeah, it was delicious. I did. I have. I have placenta in the past. jerky. <laughs> yes, all the time. <laughs> yes. And I you're mean, like I'm a regular person. Well, I think the, the the assumption, yeah, is that if you are a sex coach, then you are kinky or you know are into BDSM or have like ropes and chains and you know all kinds of stuff in your house. And the reality of that is that I'm constantly dispelling that myth because that's you know that's huge. Um, because I think the more that people talk about sex and the more people are educated about exactly the different kinds of ways that people can be open about sex, there's less shame around sex. So right when you just mention the word sex, you know, people just all of a sudden assume like the worst, I think, which is like are already very telling, you know. So, um, yeah, I mean, I do have sex toys at home, but <laughs> but they're not like really kinky ones. And I call the kind of sex that I have vanilla sex, which is usually the kind of sex that most people have. Normal sex. I don't know what flavor. My <laughs> and sex I shouldn't is even actually. say normal as a sex therapist. I mean, pistachio. Sex therapy, yeah. I see you like You're, a pistachio. I'm, I think cinnamon. Oh, no, I'm that's just saying. Spicy. Cinnamon. Yeah. It's a little hot. It Hello. Sounds very spicy. Wow. <laughs> Let's turn on the air. Is there a cinnamon flavored ice cream? It is getting hot in here. <laughs> there is cinnamon flavored ice cream. Is there? And, and cookie butter. Cookie butter. <laughs> Speculoos. That sounds Speculoos. Speculoos. Cookie is, butter is sets. How, a speculum? How do you say Speculoos, it? Speculoos, I think. Speculum? Speculum flavor? <laughs> Oh my gosh, guys. That's gross. Uh, it's delicious. I don't know if we should continue with this. <laughs> Speculum flavored. <laughs> um, all right. These are the questions I get. This is um, when I met you and found out you were a sex coach, I thought I get these questions fairly regularly from our clients, and um, maybe you have some ideas and, and uh, suggestions. Um, f- fertility. Pregnancy and postpartum, each one sort of poses um, kind of a, a roadblock to or a change yeah. to the relationship, to the physical relationship that then sometimes spills over into the relationship as a whole. Mm-hmm. Um, in fertility, couples, especially the longer that they're trying to conceive and the more they go down that medical route, it's almost sort of like at 2 p.m. she'll be peeing on a stick and get a positive and she'll call them, come on, get home, get home right now. We got, I'm peeking, I'm right. peeking. We got to have sex, which becomes very mechanical Mm -hmm. and um, can really take away that part of the relationship and then strain the whole relationship. So what I mean, what what are those couples? How can they prevent slipping down that slippery slope? Yeah, well, also coupled with, um, you know, clients that I've had that feel like once they've reached that point of like finally turning the the, um, corner and going into in vitro, you know, they're. Um, fertility issues or infertility issues become apparent and then they're like, you know, we're just doing it, but like, you know, I, we're, we have to do it. And it's it's just so beyond even just being clinical and, and mechanical that they feel like it's just, um, it's not going to work. You know, they just feel like there's just failure. no hope. Yeah, they feel like failures. That's, yeah. 
Um, so, so when sex becomes something very negative, absolutely. not even just like we have to, but it, it doesn't work for us. Which we're, is, we're broken. Yeah, that's why I think sex coaching is actually super beneficial because when you come to see a sex coach, they can kind of put a new spin on it. You know, and really a lot of the times, most of what I end up doing is just pointing out things that. I think that people have maybe forgotten, you know, like, I mean, going back to the whole idea of like having sex, um, you know, once you've already had kids and and making that time again, you know, we had the time we had. I mean, at one point, our sex lives were great before children. Right. And then you get married and then you kind of forget the husband has less attention. We have less time, energy, all that kind of stuff. We're just, you know, being pulled in so many different directions. So the same is true with fertility and, you know, um, um, and sex that people end up having kind of these um, lapses in what was creating intimacy for them in the first place. You know, there, there was there's an attraction, you know, this physical attraction when you want to have sex with somebody that it's not um, even if it's for procreation. Right. You're still thinking like, oh, my God, I really want to have sex with my mate, my lover. And when you couple this with all of those other negative things, then what you have to kind of be reminded of, I think, is what are you attracted to, you know? And those are the things that I kind of get have to be incited again, you know? It's like, let's spark those those kinds of things that we can um, make you excited about your lover about again, you know? So if it's like going on dates or like, you know, helping out your lover do things that might have been super menial tasks around the house or whatever, just to kind of like release the burden and then sparking other things that might be intimate again, you know, like, I mean, some couples need instruction on actually how to be intimate. They might not have ever been intimate in the beginning, which is kind of confusing, I think, for some people, because you're like, how did you even get together and stay together then? You know, like if you never had intimacy in the beginning. Mm -hmm. But I think some people don't realize, I think, that some people are so shut off maybe at the beginning of a relationship that finally when they get into like the real nitty gritty of something, like a year later when you've finally gotten to know somebody really well, and you're like, okay, (laughs) now I realize maybe there was just like just a blockade, a complete blockade in my brain about like, you know, really getting to that point where I was vulnerable. I just did it, you know, and I just got through it. And, you know, I didn't want my, this person that I really liked to like leave me or whatever, you know, or even if you've surpassed that and you've gotten to the point where you're in a relationship and you guys did have that intimacy, it's about, yeah, like recreating that again. So going back to the basics. Pretty much. I mean, you have to, yeah, and it just depends. Each couple's kind of like a couple by couple basis. You know, mm-hmm. you have to figure out like what will re incite it for them each. You know, I mean, for one couple, it might be like um, planning sex, not the scheduled sex that you schedule for fertility reasons, um, but scheduled pleasure sex. So it would be like, you know, let's say every Monday night at, you know, nine o'clock after the kids have gone to bed. We light a candle, we burn some incense, we play our favorite music, and we both get dressed up in whatever we're supposed to get dressed up in, whatever the other person desires, and you create that moment of intimacy that'll be really sexy and romantic if that's what does it for you, um, just to give an example. Um, and then and then you plan on, on getting romantic. You know, I like that. Yeah, that's that's all right. Well, that's okay. That's not how I have plantar fasciitis in my left foot, and I have to sleep with a boot. Oh no! And my husband wants to have sex with me as I'm wearing a boot. How's that work out? Do you take it off? I'm sleeping. We're in bed, and I have a boot on. Take off the boot. And I'm like, I'm wearing a boot. I sleep with a mouth guard. I have to take out the mouth guard. You know, sometimes I'll find myself kissing him, and I'm like, ha. (laughs) <laughs> I'm going to take it out. Yeah. yeah. I, I t- and I've never, ever, ever in 14 years together with my husband ever denied that if he's ever asked for sex, I'm always like, you know, let's go. Let's you know, like game. suit up, yeah. suit up. It's good. This was the first time ever that I've ever been like, I'm wearing a boot. <laughs> and also we still share a room with the baby. Oh. Yeah. That's, that's, probably, tough. That's, that's, that's tough. That's That's totally bad. What is, I mean, but, okay, let's talk about pregnancy for a minute and how that changes the relationship. Um, different stages of pregnancy. Obviously, some people get really nauseous and low energy. Some women at the beginning um, of pregnancy. Sec- generally, this is how it seems to go. First trimester, a little bit not feeling great. Second trimester, feeling kind of awesome. And third trimester, not feeling that good again. Is that was that your experience? Yeah. yeah, I made a big mistake. I was uh, ten days late with my first, 
and I tried everything that they say go eat the salad oh, and go salad. bounce on a ball and and then I made my husband have sex with me and the look on this poor man's <laughs> face oh no I was enormous my baby <clears throat> excuse me was the first one was about 10 pounds Ooh. so that look I made a mistake I feel like it was a mistake I feel like from that moment <laughs> He hasn't looked at me the same way, <laughs> and I regret making him have sex did with me. Did he not me. want to? He didn't want to. He did not want to. Mm. And it was like making a child eat asparagus. Oh. He was just like, oh, God. Like, he was angry about it. He was disgusted by it. Oh. I felt really it just terrible. No. Oh. I still had to get induced. What a waste. Oh. You know, so I feel like uh, if we're going to talk about pregnancy and sex, what did I, what, what can I do now, coach? Right. <laughs> Put me in, coach. I feel good. Put me in. What Are you asking what you should do to induce labor? No, I'm asking <laughs> what I should do to erase that memory from oh, his brains. Brain. So. You haven't had sex with him since? No, of course okay, we, we have. Made another just, baby, we have another so. baby. They so had it at least, least one time. Right. Yeah. Before the boot. <laughs> Before the boot. Um, <laughs> but, uh, you know, I don't know. I feel like it hasn't, it's not the same. So, okay, my biggest thing, I think that it, when... I've been with my boyfriend for almost two years. We've been living together for um, quite some time in that relationship. And when we first got together, we did what all people do in relationships, right? You like... 69. Peacock. Oh, sorry. Yeah, no. <laughs> <laughs> sorry, I apologize. I don't want to interrupt. Go ahead. <laughs> yes, we do. <laughs> but um, no. So we, we display our best self. Right. Yeah. And we take care of ourselves really well. We get yeah. the waxes, you know, we put on our makeup and we like, you know, work out all the time and shower daily and we shower daily. Right. Yeah. Exactly. So you're you're really like at the top of your game when you're first dating somebody. And eventually. Right. You're like, oh, he loves me. Look, and I've got this great ring. Blah, blah, blah. You know, I'm going to get married and and everything's going to be great. And he's going to love me forever. And then things start to like dip a little bit, you know, and then we kind of like loosen that game a little bit we become loose ourselves like not like you know sexually loose but we become loose like our skin gets a little bit not as tight because we're maybe not like putting as much effort maybe and that kind of I think all those things kind of evolve to maybe what ends up being super comfortable with each other right and when you couple that I think with kids because my, my boyfriend and I don't have kids currently we're actually in the process of doing in vitro right now and um, they're I think that since I've been actually my own personal story about like preparing for this whole pregnancy thing is I've been going through hormonal changes and weight gain. And for me, I look in the mirror every so often and I go, I have to like, I have to, especially as a sex coach, right? I have to really walk the walk. I have to be able to do what I'm recommending to my clients. And so I'm very conscious of like, re-examining every so often kind of where I stand within my relationship and that for me is super instrumental because I constantly have to kind of go you know what what do I what am I not doing anymore that I used to do before that was really exciting you know so I'm, I'm constantly communicating I mean that's my big thing with my boyfriend is that I'm like if you don't tell me what you like or mm -hmm. what's not okay right now or what's gone away or anything like that like you have to just be on the same page as me because I need to know what's going on. Well, he communicated. I do not want to have sex with you. You are 42 weeks pregnant. <laughs> oh, <ever done. laughs> right. Then. We communicated then. that. Yeah, yeah he so, communicated. Yeah. But you don't really want to erase the memory, right? I mean, it's like you guys oh, having. You sounds like you kind of no, do. No, I kind of do. <laughs> really? Yeah. I mean, obviously, I'm wearing a boot and he still wants. It, yeah. It's fine. But I'm just saying, I feel like it's still there. Like, it's still. Sure. Well, I mean, if, if it was about recreating um, intimacy and sexiness, which is what you had, I'm assuming, right, when you guys first got together. I mean, I don't know. I'm an immigrant, so no, I don't really think. <laughs> the these, boot. These Chin the boot, hairs though? ever have sexiness, but go ahead. The I, boot probably should be removed when you are planning to maybe have sex. I was not planning. Right, I was, so I was wearing a boot. So maybe if you plan on it, right? Like you might, you might plan on it, and then that we're, way you could just not have the boot on. Well, yes, we're right? having our first. We're going for the first time ever in, excuse me, six years. Um, I have a gig. And I'm going to take him with me, no kids, for the first time oh, wow. ever. Wow. Very cool. Ever. Congratulations. We're going to go away for That's just, exciting. it's just two nights. So, I mean, I, I mean I'm mean, i going to do everything. I'm going to pretend 
like I'm 19. It's going to be the biggest <laughs> throwback Thursday ever. And I'm going to... Oh, I you mean, know what you can do. What? Leave the boot at home? <laughs> yes. Yeah. No, no boot. For two no days. Actually, yeah. my plantar you fasciitis can, is better. I'm not the, wearing it as much. The steamer. Congratulations. <gasps> oh, yeah. Good segue, <laughs> Thank Dr. Berlin. Yeah. I was just well thinking. Well done. You what do I do? I will steam Anyway, <laughs> so let me tell you why steaming before sex is great. Okay. So the the way that steaming works is that you sit over a steaming pot of herbs. It just increases lubrication and okay. circulation. So okay. that helps with arousal. Are you saying right before or a couple days before? No, like right before. So it's like, mm. I don't know, 8.30, 9 o'clock, you had your dinner. Oh, honey, go do your little thing for a second. You steam for 10, 15 minutes. But you go into the bathroom and you steam? I steam in front of my TV. But you could steam anywhere. Wait, what is it? What? Wow. So it's a, a wooden stool and it has okay. a hole in the middle. So, you know, imagine what you're seeing right in front of you. And you put a mason jar with steaming water and herbs, and the steam comes up between your legs and it goes up inside your vagina. So it's it like the um, Korean spa they exactly. have? Exactly. Okay, yeah, I've yeah. seen those. Well, have home, you done it's it? It's the home but Korean spa. Wait, a Korean spa? What do you mean? I go to the Korean spa all the time. Well, so they not have all it at the Korean it. spa. They, they do? Yeah. You're missing a wrong Korean spa. Where? Yeah. Yeah. Which one? Not all of them. Mm. Like, not all which of them. Which one? Tell me right menus. now. Well, for sure, the Olympic spa does not have it. My favorite is Olympic, but they don't have it there. That's that's where I go. Where's just there? Um, I don't. I don't know. I I don't go to the other ones. Maybe Natura. I don't know. I've been to Natura. But anyways, so it helps with lubrication, okay, and it helps with circulation. So you have better. Well, sex coach, please confirm that circulation circulation helps with orgasm. Right? It's definitely better for us. It shrinks the pores in your vagina too. It makes your vagina tighter. Blackheads. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh my god! Blackheads. You really need to wax if you have on here. Is that a thing? The jackney? You could do the charcoal mask for your <laughs> labias. Um, okay, I'm all for it. I'll do. You know, I tell my husband all the time, if you want to have sex with me, here's what I need. I need you to tell me I can go to the Korean spa, right? And I can go and sit and steam and sauna and scrub. And then I'll come home feeling so amazing. I'll do whatever you want. Yeah. Whatever. Oh. That's all I okay. that's all I need in my life is to be naked with Koreans. So you can that's do it. I need you can life. do it at home, but it also makes you very relaxed too. So if you are somebody who gets anxious before sex or like kinda in your head. I feel like that was a very anti Semitic statement. Um but, just because <laughs> I just have <laughs> just regular Jew anxiety. Don't try to mask it in some sort of <laughs> vaginal steam sentence. All right? I know what you're trying to say. <laughs> I'm on to you. But yes, I get it. Okay. It was, Yeah. No, I feel amazed after I steam any part of my body. Right. It's, yes. I feel like sex is better. Everything is better. The l- world is better. I Everyone feel like just s- needs to steam. Like, I feel that's like the steaming answer. all day, every day. No, that day. should be, like, legally you should steam have life. to steam. Because yeah. it opens up the largest organ yeah. of your body. Yeah. You're talking about your skin, right? Yes. Okay, I'm just checking. <laughs> just, oh. checking. Oh. just checking, Yoko. Okay, relax. <laughs> sure. This one over here, I'm telling you. <laughs> uh, so now I'm glad you guys are both here. This I know. is a, a yeah. revelation. I'm I'm very happy. I'm, I want to get some other pointers for my uh, weekend away. <laughs> well, that's my, I have a question. So do people ever just call you like just technical? Just like purely technical. Like, am like, I doing this right? Playbook? Yeah. Like, how do I X Y Z? Or like, yeah. I really can't have an orgasm, or I want to have an orgasm like this, or for sure. how do I give a great blowjob? Yes. So, <laughs> as a ten year old, it's in the not. Room, that... It's yeah. It's not <laughs> as weird. I think of a question for people to ask those kinds of things, but um, usually those are not. Like the the ones that I really can bank on for being like clients. Usually, right. I mean, I get a lot of calls. Any any time you have like sex in your title, oh. <laughs> you know, people are calling. And they're like, "Listen, this is what I really like to do. I like to take it out." And, I like, and I'm like, uh, uh, "I'm not really sure that this is a good fit." Um, Congressman. <laughs> Congressman. <laughs> right. um, so yeah, so there's a there's a plenty of people who call in, you know, under the guise of saying, you know, like, "Hey, listen, yeah. am I doing this right?" You know, or whatever. And I'm like, uh, "Or how do I? I just want to have better." And I'm like, "Those are the calls you." Usually that are not the ones that are asking for like help, mm-hmm. like real help, where they're actually asking for like, you know, creating better relationships and more right. intimacy or, yeah. you know, finding love or yeah. whatever. So, yeah, there's not a lot of, um, you but know, you like, are kind of like a love coach with a fancy title. 
Yeah. With like a cool title. Yeah. Because it's not just it's not <laughs> mechanical sex coach. It's like the whole package. Yeah. Love, intimacy, romance. Yeah, but that's by style though. That's kind of, you know, how I've cultivated sort of the term, I guess. Um what I found is that because sex is sex is such a loaded word that I had trouble kind of advertising on Facebook and on Instagram. Anytime you had sex anywhere involved and advertising became an issue. And so I was like, How do I get creative with this? And I was like, My specialty any ways is all of these things so maybe if I just like say you know I'm relationship love and intimacy sex coach then you know the sex becomes a little it's less sneak through Facebook. Less, yeah. less obvious you know yeah. but I am a sex coach trained right that's a university yeah that's right that, that's what real sexology what's, what's the mascot what's the mascot of it? <laughs> the fighting it's a vulva the, the fighting, fighting vulva that's yeah. very nice amazing <laughs> wow. I hope that vulva steamed because it's going to be better on the field. We steam all our vulvas. Good, mm-hmm. good. Um, so <laughs> you talked about you jumped to forty two week, get this baby out of me sex. But yeah. what about in between, just during pregnancy in general? Yeah. So I mean, my biggest thing I'm constantly re- <laughs> reminding couples that sex, even though. We all think of sex as being one of those things that's great, just spontaneous, you know, just like, take me now, this is it, let's do it. You know, that's so passionate, that's so wonderful. The reality of that is I think when you've been in a long-term relationship, the most important thing is to schedule sex. And as unsexy as that sounds, it's actually like one of the best things ever. Because once you have a really busy schedule, we all have our modern lives, it's like really difficult to kind of uh, bring in that um, practice of having sex, you know, because yeah. if you take out the practice of like, if you take out like your yoga practice, you know, you just don't do it anymore. You know, you might go, oh, I'm, I can't wait to get to that yoga class. And then you finally do yoga and you're like, oh my God, that felt so great. You're like, I should really do this every week. And then this sex is the same thing. You know, it's the same with waxing. It's the same with getting your nails done or whatever. You know, if you don't do something that you normally do, you get out of practice and then you have, it's really hard to bring it back in. So I feel like regular- sometimes during pregnancy, uh, women have issues with their body as as they're growing, sometimes men have issues with yeah. their bodies. They're not as attracted or more attracted, depending on what's so going with, on. Yeah, with regards to, to having sex when you're pregnant, you mean? Yeah. Yeah. Um, so And men are always afraid they're going to hurt the baby. Yes. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. And Dr. Goldberg always says, you wish you could hurt the baby. <laughs> yeah. I mean, <laughs> the biggest thing for me, too, I mean, I got into being a sex coach because I – started as a feminist. Um, I went to a high school here in Los Angeles, Westlake School for Girls, which is now Harvard Westlake. Um, And we were a primarily feminist um, education. And so um, I, the story that I tell is that I really got into wondering what it meant to be a normal, healthy, uh, sexually expressed female in society today. I was really wondering like what it meant to be female you know what it what all these symbols were like post kind of the feminist movement bra burner generation of us trying to kind of be living in the society where we were like actually equal to men you know we could just wear jeans and t-shirts and just just be just like men right so my exploration of all of that kind of came into well actually it's okay if we just own our womanhood and our sexiness and our attractiveness and really just like stand firmly within that so to bring it back to sex coaching and where I came to, um, part of my sex coaching belief is that I think that women really have to stand in their sexiness and really um, own their femininity. And part of that means really um, being more sexy. And I don't mean like in your day-to-day life all the time, which if you are, then that's great. But being able to be pregnant is kind of like the height of women's fertility, right? It, It exudes this like feminine, beautiful goddess body. And that to me is actually super attractive. So in Western civilization, I think we tend to think that we're getting bigger and fatter and more attractive when really it's a kind of adopting a different perspective and just kind of seeing it as quite the opposite, you know? I mean, you can think very differently about whatever you wanna think any time of the day if somebody poses like a new point of view. And that's kind of my role is to be able to kind of reinvent that place for women and and Mm. being able to feel better about. Sort of change the paradigm around it. And again, like coming from costuming, it was like I already had that experience, you know, of like helping people kind of have better self-esteem around, you know, what they were wearing or how they carried themselves. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, my God. (laughs) (laughs) Yes. Well you don't, yeah, <laughs> you don't have to go to a Korean spa. You get self-esteem. 
<laughs> that just steam. Yes. I think he just branded you. I right think there. So you need to. And dot com. It'll be my Instagram tomorrow. Dot me. I'll credit you. Thank you. Uh, <clears throat> what about uh, I have the because you, you said schedule it. Is there? <laughs> it, it sounds like you said a little too mechanical, but it is sounds it, like it, right? Yeah. But I could see it working. I just is there a, a frequency that's recommended? Depends on the couples. So um, for I'll just speak specifically about my life. Sure. Um, uh, I I felt like it was important for me to have sex probably three times a week. And that's like an iffy three, you know? So like we don't have any kids right now at the house, so <laughs> it's easy to schedule three times a week. Um, but most of the time, you know, like if we've had like Mexican food or, you know, some kind of um, gas inducing meal, <laughs> there might be like stomach issues. And so we don't we're not always and we might be tired. We might be too stressed out. We might not be there that night. We might have plans. So we're flexible with those three nights. Mm, but flex we, sex. Yeah. We're yeah. flex sex. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> we <have a> flex <laughs> pass. Program. Exactly. Com. <laughs> My honey and I have the flex pass. But what um, you're saying, it makes sense, though. But if you schedule it and then, you know, opt out once in a while, it's better than not scheduling it and only opting in once in yeah, a while. Yeah, and that, that, again, that opens up the lines of communication. We go, okay, listen, we're going to have sex on Sunday nights, Wednesday nights, and then Friday and or Saturday, you know. So we can kind of at least know that those are the days that we kind of, like, avoid Mexican food, mm-hmm. you know, or no, we avoid Don't maybe, wear the boot. Ex- and we don't wear the boot. <laughs> right. right. Warm up the steamer. But we will definitely be steaming. Right. Right. Both so, of them? yeah. Nice. No, I mean, maybe not him. Three times a week. I know. Is it for guys, oh too? Is men can steam. Men can steam, too. Men can steam. steam. Yeah. steam. Yeah. A steam. Yeah. A steam. A steam. You don't want a pea steam. Yeah. Oh. What do you mean? Like their taint? <laughs> yeah. And, yeah, their perineum, oh, yes. Tea steam. <gasps> and their They're anus. steaming oh, their taint? That's wonderful. Yeah. I love that idea. That's hilarious. Oh, I mean, you know, couples that steam together. Kind of, yeah. Well, for health wow. and wellness. Now, I, I have that. a question, uh, and I'm all on board, so don't take this the wrong way. So, you know how douching is not actually good for you right. to kind of like put anything foreign and, yeah. you know, it's, it disturbs the flora? Sure. Um, does this have anything to do with that? No, it's different. No, it's different. So, it okay. helps to rebalance the flora. Because okay. if you imagine douching, you're actually inserting something into right. the vagina, and then that thing is spraying water. Or yeah vinegar or whatever oh my gosh or into the vagina so that can upset the the healthy floor balance kombucha right. well. kombucha, or kombucha yeah. if you, dr you Berlin just shook just shook the bottle. kombucha oh, and then yeah. it was an accident so this is Maybe different you could steam with kombucha huh? although no the heat element would kill all of the all the, the good uh, stuff the good biotics yeah. Yeah. the good biotics <laughs> <laughs> that's my term the pre or probiotics uh, so that okay that's good to know so yeah. i figured i just was clearing yeah, that the up. whole practice is safe steaming Safe steaming. <laughs> <laughs> right? Isn't that yeah, true? Yeah, totally. So many Instagram accounts just we created for you today. Right, I know. I need like a paper and pen to just take notes. <laughs> well, luckily, or we're I recording can it. Listen to it. Later. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, I'll send yeah. you the link. Um, how about this? How about after the baby comes? Right? So there's like a period of time. It's a big transition for so many reasons. Emotional, you're not sleeping as well, usually eating as well. Um, The relationship often takes a hit. I sort of feel like any relationship between two people is is like trying to climb up a a down escalator. Sure. You know, Mm -hmm. and uh, I think that having a baby speeds up the escalator. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> I mean, my my biggest thing is for couples that have already had, I mean, that have just had children, a lot of times there, there's so much pressure, I think, on the female to think, I got to just get my body back and, and really be, like, sexy again. And then and the pain, maybe if they've endured any pain during childbirth, which I know a few have. What? Yeah. Tickles. Tickles. <laughs> <laughs> Um, so yeah, about having a lot of honor for being able to say this is kind of maybe like a no-go zone for a little while and just resting because our bodies need to heal. I mean, they're such amazing um, mechanisms that can that can heal us right really fast. So if if you're lucky enough to be able to have a fast healing post-pregnancy time, then um, you should be fine to be able to have sex. And, you know, I'm not even sure exactly how long it takes each person or whatever, but when you finally are okay, then you've given yourself enough time to be able to heal. Sure. And then you can have normal sex, you know, because I think that the problem well, there's comes the, in. Uh, there's a six-week, well, most midwives and doctors 
do a six week post baby checkup. Right, but if you've had like an like episiotomy or like you know anything else, like there's like just that seems like the earliest time. The earliest yeah. time. Yeah. I yeah. say that's early. I feel like in my and I can only speak for my own vagina, but um, I I have two babies, and the first baby I had a second degree tear, and I feel like I healed yeah. maybe normal to slow, but. Like, even once I was healed, there was so much stuff to integrate. Like, there's yeah. milk leaking out of my boobs, which are the size of my head or larger, which are smacking <laughs> my husband in the face <laughs> while we're trying to have sex and I'm not lubricated enough because I'm breastfeeding. Right. You didn't steam. It's crazy. I didn't steam. No. You're right. I didn't steam. <laughs> comes back but there's, there's like, for me, I know that there was a lot to integrate. And then you have this whole idea of what you are as a mother versus who you were before a baby came out of you. You were just a woman. And so I had to make sense of what uh, a mother who has sex is like Mm-hmm. As myself versus just my my previous, you yeah. Know, so then it becomes like self. a reinvention, kind of, you know. So like there who was you a lot are. of work it's from physical like, work, yeah, emotional work. But how do you, do you do that together? Yeah, you talk it through. Yeah, I'm like, this is crazy. There's milk all over you right now. To my husband, I mean, like, I just had to say what was going on, and I think that really helped because but did that bother him? The milk? Yeah, I don't think it bothered. I don't him. think it things are in there. <laughs> <laughs> Was it like a medical issue? He's like, where's the lactate? Uh, yeah. She wants to have sex. Um, and how, how old are your kids? Six. No. Oh, my God. That would be your child. You have a six-year-old. Yes. <laughs> Five and three. Mm. Five, Five and three. three. Yeah. And the age is, let's see, you have two years. They're so close together. So close. Yeah. yeah. That's so hard to have baby. I don't it's know how insane. people. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I once checked into a hotel room that they hadn't cleaned yet. Uh-oh. And that must Where be. Where are you going with this? That yeah, must be uh-oh. what it's like <laughs> when it's not ready to be checked. It's not when the room's not ready yet. <laughs> it was a late checkout. It's not ready. It's a mess. Uh-oh. It's a mess in there. Uh, yeah, because we have four years difference. Yeah, I think that's kind of like maybe a more ideal spread. Four? Yeah. Well, there's Ours are all two years apart, but. Well, you're but you're in the what? clear now. Like everyone could go into the kitchen and like make a peanut butter sandwich on their own. Yeah, right? yeah. But now there's like kids running around all the time. Like uh, those little, the older kids stay up late. How late? Uh, like ten o'clock. Oh, that's late. Wait, how know. old are your kids? Uh, seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. Seven, nine, eleven, and thirteen. June first, June seventh, June tenth, and April thirtieth, two thousand four, six, eight. Okay, and I'm 10. not asking for socials. I don't I'm know just why saying. All of a sudden you <laughs> it's got just real. very. <laughs> Because I'm German. I'm That's just saying very though. well engineered. Like most dads are like, um, April. Um, I, I know how much they weigh. <laughs> oh. You know, I have a question for you. May yeah. I ask you? Because I, sure. really, I haven't really spoken to you about your doula experience, mm-hmm. what it's like for you as a man to be a doula. Yeah, it's interesting. You know, uh, I have... Uh, You're the first male duel I've ever heard of. We're a very small group on Facebook. <laughs> There's of three. Of course you have a There's group. Steve. I love that you have Steve. No, no, no we Steve, don't really have really? a group. I'm saying uh, if we oh. did, it would be a small group. <laughs> okay. And you you not, should start the group. And we're all very diverse. Some of us were not born men. Some of us, uh, you know, it's like there's not a lot of male doulas. No. And I know one male lactation consultant and... Um, and yeah, it, he's a pediatrician, though. It kind of okay. makes a lot of okay. sense. Okay, that okay. makes sense. Yeah. Makes a lot of sense. But so what for is it me, like for you as a male doula, it's the same progression. Like I do a lot of body work during pregnancy. We do yeah. massage. We do chiropractic adjustments. We do a lot of labor preparation, and the body work that we do is both mechanically relaxing, tight muscles releasing them, but also mind body relaxing. So. The first time I ever went to a birth was because I got called to a home birth for by a midwife. Um, this baby was just stuck for seven hours at seven centimeters. Oh, my gosh. And they were racking their brains trying to figure out it was posterior, so the skull was against the back of the oh. spine. All of her labor was in the back, and the baby just could not budge through there. And the, she called me, and I remember because I was in the pet store trying really hard not to buy a pet for, <laughs> with my family. And uh, she said, it, I know you can get breech babies to turn sometimes. Can you get a posterior baby? Can you get this baby to rotate its skull off of her spine onto her belly? And I said, I don't know, but I would love to get out of this pet store, so I'm going to come try. And I went there, and I didn't know either. They were filming a documentary, so this is all on film. And... Um, I went there and I worked with her for like two to three hours. And she was in that sort of, you know, excited state. It was like half pain, half 
pleasure. This was state. in her house. In her house. At seven no. centimeters. Santa at seven centimeters. And, and she's laboring for that long. Nobody said maybe you go to a hospital. They were talking about it, and then okay. and then, but they were trying to think like, what else how, can we do? How do they know the baby's not in distress? They monitor the baby at home regularly, and if the baby's showing even pink flag signs of distress, they go to the hospital right away. How are they monitoring the baby? The same tool they use in a hospital? Mm, different tool, but they have a handheld tool that listens okay. to the baby's heart okay. rate, and they, okay. they check in. It depends. It just makes me very nervous when I hear that. But go ahead. Please continue. Yeah. So you're there. Uh, so I'm there. We do this body work, and it's my first time meeting her, and she's in this half semi-orgasmic state, right? And so I'm just like, hi. My name, I'm trying to get informed consent. My name is Ellie Berlin. I'm a chiropractor. I'm going to do some body work and adjustments with you. Is that okay? And she's just like, hi, Dr. Berlin. I love you. And it's so <laughs> nice to meet you. I'm like, okay, great. And every time I push into her, she's like, you know, again, like half pain, half pleasure. Um, and then it was about two, I think two and a half hours of body work, just rich, really strong, tight back and pelvis, very athletic woman. And as we release things, you can feel her whole body opening up. And mm. about two and a half hours in, we just all sort of heard and felt the baby clunk the other way off her spine. Oh. And I think and she just said, you just, God bless you, you saved oh, my birth. And man. from there, she progressed pretty quickly, and uh, and she gave birth. So that story got out. <laughs> And, and then you I stayed got for called. the birth. You stayed for I the... left. No, I left. left. I went back okay. to my family. Okay. Um, my job was done. Um, but I got called to another birth a couple of weeks later for a very similar thing where what I did didn't end up helping. You know, the baby was stalled and she ended up needing to go to the hospital. She ended up getting an epidural, which helped her relax a lot. And then she also ended up having a vaginal birth. But those stories started to get out. And I was getting called more and more at the last minute with babies or pregnancies that were stalled or stuck or too much pain and um it was working and then eventually i had a call from this one girl and she said hi i'm 37 weeks pregnant and my friend becky said you came and massaged her for like three hours while she was in labor i want you to come massage me while i'm in labor and i was like well becky's baby was stuck and she said why do i have to wait for my baby to be stuck <laughs> and i really didn't have a good answer for that i'm like i don't have an answer for that so let's try it and i went and it was kind of amazing to not have a problem. Right. And to do body work on someone who responds really well to body work and just help her stay physically and mechanically relaxed and emotionally relaxed using body work and watch that birth just progress really smoothly. And I did stay to the end of that one because that's what she wanted. And then um, I ended up in a few situations where it got really weird because there was no doula. One in particular, I just got called to this birth center. Baby was stuck for a long time. They had been laboring for almost 30 hours and never met this woman before, never met her partner. The midwife called and said, please, this is our last hope. Is maybe you can get things going again. And I got called in there, and I, uh, the midwife and her assistant were exhausted. They'd been up for so long. She, they didn't even introduce me. They're like, she's in there. <laughs> okay. And I go in there, and there's this woman on the bed. Um, it's at a birthing center. She's on the bed, and her her partner, husband, I don't know what. He's like, are you Berlin? <laughs> Nice like, to meet oh my you. Gosh. Yeah, he goes, oh, thank God, I got to go get some smokes, okay? And he left, and I was there for smokes? hours. He never came back. No. What are you talking He was talking like, he about? wasn't the husband. He was sort of like baby daddy. Didn't seem that comfortable being there, very exhausted. So I walk up to this woman. She's sort of in a child's pose on the bed. And again, got to give her informed consent. This is what I want to do, why I want to do it, make sure you're okay with it. But you ever talk and, and you feel like there's nobody listening? Mm. Like, like yeah, you're not kids. sure if the, you know, okay, good. <laughs> but you're, not, you're on the phone but not sure if you got disconnected or not. That's right. what it felt like, but she was right there. And I, I don't want to start yet because I don't feel a connection and I don't have consent to do yeah. what I need to do. Yeah. Um, and I wait for a minute or two and it's awkward. Just me and her. Never met her before. Nobody else in there. All of a sudden she picks up her head and she looks at me um, with like these very green eyes. And she says, <laughs> and just threw up all over the place. Come on. Oh, yeah. Okay. And I'd never been to this birth center Is before. Is that consent? I'm not sure. So I called my lawyer right away. <laughs> Uh, and, uh, you know, I had to help her change, you know, I find sheets and change the bedding. It turned out to work really well. It turned out to work really well. But as labor was kicking in more, she was sort of looking back at me like, help me, like mm -hmm. coach me, guide me. And I'm like, oh, I just rub stuff and crack things. I don't know. <laughs> 
how to help you. And so at that time, I decided I should do doula training because I've been going to all these births. Yeah. And I need more. Sometimes yeah. they're going to need more for me. And my wife was uh, also in, in the birth industry. She's a pre and postnatal psychologist. And we just decided to do it together. <gasps> oh, she did it too. She did it too. We went, We became a couple of doulas. No pun intended. Just oh, my sort of. God. Gosh, and, that is um, kind of adorable. They're adorable, I know. right? My kids know everything. Doulas, yeah. A couple <laughs> of you. doulas, and you know. I'm going to play that song for you tonight. Uh, wow, that is really, you know, that's one of those things where you, it's it, it makes so much sense. When I heard you were doing it, I thought, yeah, that that's, <laughs> yes. But also, and not that I have anything against a, a man being in the room. I have a male gynecologist. I prefer male gynecologists. Every female gynecologist I've ever had was very catty with me. Oh. I like male gynecologists because they are there to just do a job, and I've never felt any judgment. My first gynecologist in college, San Diego State, Dr. K-U-N-T-S-M-A-N. <laughs> You're lying. I am not lying to you. And it was gynecologist. Mm. Gynecologist. College. I Thank love you. your puns. Thank Dr. You. Kuntzman. <laughs> I, love, he pronounced I love your it. puns. It wasn't Dr. Kuntzman. <laughs> he pronounced it Kuntzman. Well, of course Thank you did. You. Yeah. Well, of course you did. Um, but I prefer male. So I'm not, so this isn't judgy at all, but when I heard you I'm sort you of curious who you go to now. <laughs> I know. I was... Um, Hmm. You know, you probably know my gynecologist, uh, Dr. Banuni, oh. which also yeah. sounds like a vagina. Yeah, yeah. it is in person. Um, <laughs> it's in person. Um, and uh, I just, when I heard you were doing it, it just made so much sense. Well, thank you. Thank you. It made, and I mean, I almost want to have another baby just so you could be my doula. I would be there I'm for you. I'm never going to have another no. baby. Right. But um, I love that you're there because... Wow, I mean, you bring so much. It's like a whole different side of what a doula is. My my first doula, thumbs down to the ground. Really, after the a terrible induction. experience, terrible experience. Uh, second doula, different person. Great, she was great. But the first doula, I was shaking. Um, I had a twenty-two hour labor, so hour twenty, With I a was ten pound baby. Yeah, I was just shaking. I was just shaking, and she was like pinning me down. She's like, "Stop shaking!" Wow. Oh, yes, really? I know. Not it's not terrible. Okay. No, I don't remember I that chapter. Yeah, that's, uh, yeah, that was not, not. I'm sure that's not part there. of mm. your training. Mm. So that was just such a. Oof. I always shake because I'm. I was in the south for a while. To be polite, I shake too, so they feel. <laughs> You know, like if somebody <laughs> spills, you're supposed to, I heard this when I was living in Georgia. If somebody spills at your table, you're supposed to spill too. Spill also. So they feel good. It's like hysterical But then it's like shaking. a domino. Everybody's spilling. Yeah. Yeah. So polite. So we just shake. So we, we do song parodies uh, while we're in labor. That's what I like to do. What? Like, give me an example. Um, well. Uh, like Weird Al style? Song well, party? just whatever <laughs> whatever's on her playlist. <gasps> Let it go, let it go, don't hold on anymore. Oh, that's nice. Let it go, let it go, relax your <laughs> pelvic floor. <laughs> I don't care as long as I don't tear. Oh, yeah, you it. did this to me. I'm not talking to your mother anymore. Anyway, stuff like that. Oh, my God. It's that's just fun, so just whatever great. comes up. Yes. Yes. Amazing. No, you have to. We have to. a good time. We have a good time. You'd be a great doula, too, because comedy is really helpful. I, if I didn't have to work at night. Yeah. You'd and be not, a doula? I don't want to ever cancel a gig. <laughs> I would totally be a doula. But I, my fear is, like, I would have to, you know, I'd have, like, some amazing set somewhere, and then i get a call. I'm, I'm going into labor, and it's like, I'm going uh, up on the last factory. I got to go, yeah. yeah. Sorry. I got a seven Yikes. minute. Yeah. <laughs> I have to go tell dick jokes. <laughs> <laughs> so, whoopsie daisies. Have oh. fun. Um, but I would totally be a doula because I, I'm fascinated by that world now that I've gone through it two times, and I know that I could... You know, I don't know all the stuff that you would do, right? I, that's but we're different. such an extra I, I layer. I find that so much of it has to do with helping someone not be afraid. Right. And so I can do it with body work, but you can do it with comedy. And, yes, yes, and yes. And it's just when you're, when you're laughing, your body's like, I'm not being chased by a tiger. Right. Yeah. I My husband asked me to turn it off uh, during the second pregnancy. So second pregnancy, no drugs, just all just... You know, and moving around way more because the first one I was induced, so I eventually had to get an epidural. Mm -hmm. And then I told him to turn off the epidural, so eventually I felt everything anyway. So it was just such a different labor. So, I, but I feel 
And nobody Happy strapped you I, down while you were shaking. No, which is oh I could God. shake yeah. all I want. I could shake, shake, shake the baby out. Shake, <laughs> shake, right? All you right. Would do so it. I'm trying to do your parodies. It's not working. Oh, um, but I, I feel like I've had both, so I feel like I can be respectful to whatever. If you choose epidural, hey, I get it. But also, like, if you don't want to do uh, any drugs, that's great too. But during my second uh, labor, I was trying to make the nurses laugh, and my husband was like, please, just turn it off. <laughs> and I couldn't turn it off. You couldn't. It's it's what comes out of you. And it probably makes you feel, like, safer. I feel like you bring your own unique flavor to being a doula, and, you know, you're bringing, like, I'm going to make you so relaxed and make your body feel great, and and everyone brings their own sort of unique thing, so... Yeah, yeah. The, the great th- your first doula might be amazing for someone else. Right, for someone you know, else. For someone not who likes for to be For tackled. someone who's not yeah. shaking. <laughs> exactly. Yeah, exactly. Or not shaking. Well, that was part of the conversation I didn't see coming. Um, I would say this. First of all, uh, Bianca, when you talked about changing the paradigm around the growth during pregnancy, that it's not just I'm big and I'm heavy, but I'm, I have curves and, uh, you know, I'm radiant and I'm, you know, not everybody's... Peak of fertility. Peak of fertility. <laughs> not everybody's going to feel like that no matter, you know, yeah. what happens. No, but sure. But uh, I will just say we are organizing a flash mob of third trimester pregnant women. Oh. Hopefully by the time this airs, we'll have the video. And it's all, we're, we're it's, uh, we have a choreographer doing this um, set, this uh, dance choreography to Justin Timberlake's I'm Bringing Sexy Back. Oh, that's so, so funny. Oh and the whole idea is, invited, of course, it's oh, to I raise. I still look a little pregnant. I'm, yeah, I was like, sure, I'm come like, along. I'm not I, I do too. Passing, but. <laughs> you can totally come along. My wife actually, she, she, Insisted on getting pregnant again before I lost all the baby weight from the first baby. So I'm still now after four <laughs> babies. I'm still. You guys are done, right? Lug- uh, I don't know. You gotta ask her. I'm, <gasps> I just I just carry the luggage. Uh, <laughs> what? Just, oh my god! I'm just I just do the playlist. All right. Uh, is there a, a final thoughts? Anybody have final thoughts on on uh, sex during, before, or after pregnancy? Go. Can't get pregnant. Can't get pregnant. Yeah. Right. Have, have sex when true. you're pregnant. Yeah. Oh, because you can't get pregnant. You can't get pregnant. Nothing to worry about. It's great. Oh. During. Right. That's Got a great it. tip. Right? Yeah. So do it. I love it. Yeah. Thank I you, mean... Kira. That's a meaningful tip. I'm going to write that down. <laughs> Just the tip. Just the tip. Uh, <laughs> on Instagram. At Just the Tip. There you go. Add it to the long list. Uh, and Nicole, final thoughts? Yeah. I mean, I really... I really like what you said about embracing the the ripe, juicy, feminine, sensual person that you're becoming when you're pregnant. I feel like you added yeah. juicy. I love that word. But it's fine. It's a you kind of word. <laughs> I really it's love a the really word good juicy. word. Yeah. But what don't we mean, love just, about juicy? Yeah, I, I like juicy, but that's <laughs> a little different. <laughs> juicy, yeah. juicy. I want to. I want juicy. to open a juice truck. Called oh. Jews for Juices, but my you rabbi told didn't me about approve. This. Yeah. I was talking about the, for um, for the cheese shop that I wanted to do. The what cheese shop. That? Jesus Christ. Yeah. Yeah, oh. that's great. Why don't you? Or, wait, what was cheese the other one? Cheese and crackers. Uh, <laughs> Jesus, Jesus, Christ. Christ. Jesus Christ. crackers. That'd be great. All the, in the baby cheeses and, um, you know, section or or with the Swiss go, cheeses. Go be Jesus. Ho- holy cheeses. Yeah. With the Swiss. <laughs> Jesus on a stick. That doesn't seem right. I mean, I feel like he wants to be in on the business now. I totally do. I mean, I feel like he juice is... and cheese truck. I love cheesy puns, so yeah. this is perfect. <laughs> you don't get I'm more <laughs> cheesy than these puns. Uh, Bianca, final thoughts. Um, first of all, I did have one question that kept popping up in my mind. Just curious. Tell me. Do uh, gay couples have the same love and relationship problems Good as straight couples? Question. Yeah, I mean, look, Thank you. everybody's different, right? So, I mean, usually. I think that um, gay po- gay couples usually want to be just like hetero couples, um, and the reality is is that it's not the same dynamics a lot of times. So it's really hard for gay couples to want to be like hetero cu- like hetero couples. I'm holding up. Is that like bunnies. vegans eating soy hot dogs? <laughs> <laughs> Similar but different, okay. um, but yeah. So it's. It, I think it's a. It's better. It's a better idea to have a healthier idea of what it means. We have to kind of create this because there hasn't been a real traditional idea of what it means to be a gay couple in America now. You mm. know, we uh, the the ideas that they. It's a new chapter. It's a new chapter. Yeah. So they have to write it, and you know. Is that what you encourage? 
writing the new chapter for yeah. what it means to be a healthy gay couple in America. Yeah. Yeah, sure. Or in, a, in the world. All right. What if universe. two gay guys are wearing a boot? And... <laughs> <laughs> All right. I'll ask you off air. It's yeah, too technical. <laughs> yeah. Well, they don't have that pregnancy problem. No boots in bed. They can have, they can have sex while anyone's pregnant. Right. And yeah. they don't have to worry about getting pregnant ever. It's your dream. I know. <laughs> I would like to thank everybody for joining us on this podcast today. Our co-hosts, Kira Soltanovich, and we can find you online at... Uh, KiraComedy.com. KiraComedy.com. And I apologize for the tuberculosis. Oh, yeah, it's okay. <laughs> I don't think they can catch it. Uh, and Nicole Sessions, you are you have a couple of websites. I do, I do. So uh, for Yoni people thrown. who are interested in yoni steaming or a steaming. What is yoni, yoni? Where does that come from? It's a Sanskrit word for vagina. Oh, vulva. that's what I thought. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Dr. Yoni, I think it's at Cedars. Did you have Dr. Yoni? Oh, no, no, you had doctor. <laughs> you had a different doctor. But he pronounces it yoni. 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 Dr. Yeah. Yoni. Kunzman and yoni. Kunzman and yoni. It's a, yeah, it's a law practice. <laughs> <laughs> So Yoni Throne. Yoni Throne dot me and for uh, my birth doula services and hypnobirthing, lovebloombirth.com. Lovebloombirth.com yeah. and Bianca White, our guest today. Thank you so certified much. Certified sex coach. We can find you online at Hollywoodlovecoach.com. Hollywoodlovecoach.com. And your practice is here in Los Angeles. It is in Hollywood. Can you work uh, remotely with people over like, yeah, absolutely. Skype and mm-hmm. things? Oh, beautiful. So you're worldwide. I can be. I'm not right now, but I like. But you can be <laughs> local <laughs> after yeah. this podcast for sure. <laughs> Absolutely. Aww. Thanks everyone for listening to the Informed Pregnancy and Parenting podcast. Share us with your friends and visit us online for access to our blog, documentaries, and also soon the Flash Mob and other great pregnancy and parenting resources at informedpregnancy.com. <laughs>